Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be sharing a story with you. Our movie is set in a time where the Earth is mostly covered in water, and it opens up with an aerial shot of Korotoa, a village in the middle of this vast ocean. Then it focuses on a group of people in here rationing a pitcher of water. Unfortunately, it isn't enough for all of them, so a guy named Timor gives a child his share of water. Then a man named Tustin, who seems to be the leader of this group, checks out the ocean as if he's looking for something. Willow, a young woman, then comes up to him and gives him a strange piece of jewelry, telling him the time. But Tustin immediately tells her that the sunstone is only for her usage and hands it back to her. Not long, Tustin notices a boat approaching and tells Willow to hide the sunstone. Just then, Timor approaches Tustin and tells him that he'd successfully managed to make fresh water. But Tustin interrupts him and tells him that now isn't the time. Timor notices the ship approaching and quickly leaves. The boat soon docks on their village, and a man named Mason and some men get off. They start checking on the people's offerings, but a Mason gets mad as the offerings are too little, and tells Tustin that his boss, Ian Fien, will not be happy with the amount he's providing. He then gives him a small amount of water to last for the next month in exchange for those offerings. But Tustin tells him that the water won't be enough to feed his people. So Mason helps him out by ordering his men to take six women away from the village. Willow picks up a knife quickly, wanting to fight him, but Timor quickly stops her and urges her to hide, saying that he'll take care of it. Tustin, on the other hand, tries to reason with Mason by offering himself in exchange for his people, but Mason ends up hurting him instead, rejecting his offer. Soon the village goes into chaos, and Willow gets captured by Mason's men. Timor sees this and tries to help her, but he's stopped by a woman called Sion, telling him it's too dangerous. Elsewhere, Mason ties and hangs Tustin at the edge of his boat. He then throws a device in the ocean, soon attracting some sharks. With his pair of electronic gloves, Mason starts controlling the sharks in the ocean, making them eat Tustin and attack the other villagers around. Mason then tells the village to double their offerings the next time they're around, or he'll take all of them and bring them to his boss, Ian, for a fate much worse. He and his men then leave. Now after they leave, Timor goes to take a submarine pod in hopes to save Willow and the others, but Sion again tries to stop him. However, this time it doesn't work, so with no choice, she goes with him, and they follow Mason's boat. And while traveling, Sion starts talking about how she's never seen anybody control sharks like the way Mason just did. However, Timor has seen this before, and tells her that he'd seen people do the same when he was a kid. But those people were kind, and didn't use the sharks for evil deeds. He then adds that all those people are no longer alive, and they proceed on with the mission. Soon, they arrive at the bad guy's village, where they see Willow and the others being held as prisoners. Deciding to get out of the pod to save everybody, he tells Sion to wait inside and to run away if they get in trouble. Unfortunately for Timor, he gets spotted by Mason's men, so with no choice, he goes back to the pod after narrowly escaping a flamethrower. Sion sees this and immediately drives the pod towards him. However, she accidentally passes through motion sensors, and this releases a fleet of sharks, and they start to chase him. Fortunately, Timor manages to get to the pod, but the sharks are attacking, and he quickly descends deeper into the waters to avoid them. Now, the pressure of the deep waters causes the sharks to leave. But although now safe from the sharks, the two face a new problem, with the pressure now starting to crush their pod. But luckily, they manage to ascend just in time. Meanwhile, Willow's being put to hard labor, along with the other prisoners, where they're forced to keep spinning turbines in order to produce fresh water. Just then, she overhears the warlord, Ian and Mason, talking about their new fresh water-making device. Mason tells his boss that once this thing is set up, they wouldn't need people to spin the turbines anymore, and will use the prisoners as food for the sharks instead. Ian agrees to this and leaves. All defeated, Timor and Sion return back to the village, where Timor is told by their elder to give it up. But of course, he doesn't give it up, and decides to take a bunch of valuable items from his home. Together, he and Sion go and hire a free diver named Naimu, who can hold her breath underwater for a really long time, Edgar, an electrician engineer, and Toby, who's the demolitions expert. Now together, they go to steal a boat, but Timor soon realizes that the boat they had stolen belongs to the warlord Ian. So Timor calls Mason and tries to exchange the ship for his friends. 
But Mason doesn't accept that offer and threatens him by saying he'll murder his entire village if he doesn't return that ship back. So afraid, Timor decides to give him the ship back without any conditions. But unfortunately, Toby, who loves blowing things up, places a bomb on that ship. And when the ship arrives at the bad guy's village, it explodes. This causes Ian to get so mad he sends a message to Timor and his people, telling him that he'll murder them all and release a bunch of sharks underwater to destroy them. He first shows an example by getting Mason to control the sharks to eliminate one of their people, while Willow and the other captives watch helplessly, and Timor on the line, hearing the screams. After that, Ian orders his men to throw Willow into the ocean. After they do, Mason controls the sharks to attack her, but somehow, they don't attack her. This is when Ian realizes that Willow's special, so he takes her away to some other place. Timor, who's on the line, hears this and calls out for her, but Ian offers him one last chance to save everyone by asking him to deliver some items to him. So after he gathers these items, he decides to give up and tells his teammates to leave. But just then, a lady named Anne, who's a captain, approaches him, and together with everybody else, they talk Timor out of giving up. So with newfound hope, the team thinks of a plan to fight back. Using Anne's boat, the team travels to Ian's village, hoping to rescue everyone and take down the evil warlord. Meanwhile, Ian's talking with Willow, and he's asking her how she's able to control the sharks without any device like him. But she tells him that she doesn't know, and the warlord doesn't believe her, so he puts her in the water again, this time with a tiger shark and threatens her with it. But still, she doesn't say anything. So he threatens her once again by sending Mason and some men to Korotoa to take people hostage. As Mason and his boys wait near Korotoa Village for their orders to attack, Ian Fien gets an idea to place head monitoring devices on Willow, hoping to learn how she controls the sharks. He then throws one of the prisoners in the ocean and releases some of the sharks. He asks Willow to use her abilities to eat the poor woman. But of course, she doesn't listen to him, and Ian tells Mason to get ready to attack. So, with no choice, she starts asking the sharks to attack the woman. But just then, alarms start going off. Ian and his men then realize that they're under attack by Timor and his friends, so they quickly release the sharks on him. Timor sees this and gets on his hoverboard in order to distract him as Edgar tries scanning Ian's village so they can see where the prisoners are located. Timor gets attacked by a catapult but luckily dodges it. Realizing people are a hard target, they release the catapult on the boat instead. Anne's asking Edgar if they can leave now, but he tells her he's not done scanning the place entirely so they have to get closer. Wanting to take him down, Ian orders more sharks to attack Timor in the boat. So Timor quickly heads back to the boat but as he does, he gets attacked by a shark, and he falls in the water. Timor survives quickly swimming to the boat, but bad luck for Toby as a shark eats him, shocking everyone. Now all coming back to reality, they help Timor back up. The group then move the boat further to safety. Although now saddened by the loss of their friend, the group decide to proceed on with their plan. So Edgar, who managed to scan the entire place, tells them where the prisoners are. So Timor and Naimu dive into the water, and will try to sneak underneath the village. But when they do, sharks start chasing them both. Meanwhile, Edgar detects a big shark with bombs on it coming towards their boat. So, Anne quickly takes a harpoon gun and shoots at this thing. After failing that, she tells everyone to abandon the boat. And as they all jump into the water, the shark collides and the boat explodes. And now, all in the water, the sharks start attacking Edgar, and he's gone. Without their friends, Sion and Anne are now in danger. Willow here, who can sense the danger, tries using her powers to control the sharks from afar. She fails at first, but soon successfully does it, luring the sharks away from Sion and Anne, and they can swim to shore. However, Ian sees that Willow did that, so he orders his men to capture Sion and Anne, and gets them to bring Willow to him. Ian then repeats the exercise from before, and hooks Willow up with the monitoring devices again. Only this time, he controls sharks to attack Sion and Anne. Seeing him in danger, Willow again uses her powers to stop the sharks, but that gave Ian and his men all the info they needed. Willow sees it, and starts making the sharks attack Ian's men instead. So Ian quickly zaps her with the headset and she faints. After getting what they needed from her, Ian and his men throw Willow into the ocean. Fortunately, Timor manages to save her, but just then Mason arrives and starts attacking him. Now Timor soon gets overpowered by Mason and just when he's about to finish him off, Willow wakes up and makes a shark eat Mason, saving Timor's life. The both of them get Sion and Anne on board and together, they all go to release and save the prisoners. After they do, Sion and Anne decide to split up to find some treasure, while Timor and Willow escape. But just then, 
they get stopped by Ian, and they fall into the water. Soon, an army of sharks attack them, but Willow again uses her powers to stop them, making them attack Ian instead. The movie ends with all of them heading back to Korotoa, where Willow is crowned the Queen of the Sea. Always a pleasure having you guys around. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you had a good time today, and get ready for the next one.